Hello, darlings. Welcome to episode 80. And today we have another interview with my friend, Katie Reed. Hi, Katie. Can you introduce Hello. yourself? Yeah. So I am Katie Reed and I am the meal planner coach. And I'm so happy to be here. So thanks for asking me to be on your podcast. Yeah, of course. I think it's going to be super helpful to all my listeners and clients to have some tips on meal planning because that's part of the coaching that I do as well. So yeah. before like we get into the tips and the meat of the conversation, why don't you tell us about a little bit about you and what you do and how you became a coach? Yeah, absolutely. So it's kind of funny when I was doing the coaching and the meal planning, it just kind of like all converged at one time, which was beautiful because as we'll probably talk about later, meal planning, no matter what system you have, you have to have that coaching or that mindset aspect with it too, in order for it to be successful. So basically my start, my story starts when I was frustrated by the what's for dinner question. And I was sick of spending so much time in the grocery store and trying to figure it all out. And after a long day of work, then I would still need to figure out what to eat and say, do we have the right, the right ingredients for the recipe? All that kind of crazy, right? Mm -hmm. And so I set out on this journey to find the perfect meal planning solution so that it would save us time and energy and sanity on anything dinner time. And as I went on this journey, I went through all of these different versions of meal planning. We're talking apps and, you know, Pinterest plans and YouTube videos and apps and even meal delivery services. We did the whole nine yards and all of them were telling me that they were like the perfect system, right? That would solve all of my problems but none of them worked for me. And so I was asking myself why I knew a part of it had to do with the system, but there was something else that was missing. And so at the same time I was on this journey, I found the life coach school and found coaching and that completely changed my life. And then I just combined the two. And now I help other women take the drama and overwhelm on a meal planning. And it's been a really fun journey seeing how people can just revolutionize that part of their lives that really should not be the cause of our stress and overwhelm, right? I agree. And with emotional eating, what we do best is thinking about food all the time. Mm -hmm. And I think the reason why the planning is so powerful is because it takes away all the energy and time that we spend thinking about food, especially when it comes like, oh, it's lunchtime. And then as soon as you finish lunch, you start thinking, what is going to have for dinner then? Mm. And then you spend the whole afternoon thinking about dinner. Yeah. <laughs> and that happens every meal if you don't have a plan. Mm -hmm. so, and you didn't even mention like afternoon or morning snack. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> or maybe an after lunch dessert. You can have all different names for stuff, I bet. Exactly. So the idea is like we make the plan and then we free our brain for other mm -hmm. things because everything's already set it up. Everything's already done. And the decisions already made. We don't need to, to do them and spend the time thinking about food all the time. Mm -hmm. yep. So, and you like, so you created your own system. What that transition, that journey turning to? Well, I guess when you feel like you've tried everything, you have to take it upon yourself to make it yourself. So I, I did exactly that. I just did a lot of trial and error and making different things. And um, eventually I adapted it also to help other people who maybe didn't have the same type of meal planning needs that I did. And so I created this tool and this uh, program that kind of combines it all. And that's what I have today. So as I think I mentioned to you and all my listeners know that I tell them to plan 24 hours in advance what they're going to eat. You do have a little slightly different way of planning. And I really want you to talk me through it and share your, your tool, your academy, your program. But I, before we start talking about that, why do you think it's important to have a meal planning 
or to plan our meals, whatever the time is, if it's weekly, if it's daily, or if it's monthly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say the freedom. You have the freedom to know that you have the ingredients that you need to make whatever meals you want to make. And that frees up that space, as you were mentioning before, in your brain. So you're not having to make even more decisions. There's science behind, you know, <laughs> that our brain only has so much capacity for making decisions. And so if you're using any time or energy, like trying to come up with it on the fly or in the grocery store, what are you taking that away from? Mm -hmm. And do you think that will also save money? Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> Saving money because there's so many people that I talk to and myself included. I mean, I could talk from personal experience, right? That we would go into the grocery store and be like, we don't really know what to have for dinner. So we're just going to like peruse up and down the aisles and just like pick random things. And then what happens, so many people can relate to this. Is you get home and you're like, I just bought like hundred dollars or more of groceries and I feel like I have nothing to eat. How does that work? <laughs> so then for the rest of the week, you're having to like hodgepodge all these different ingredients to try to make something to eat. Right. And then, I mean, that happened to me sometimes that I learned not to go to the shops hungry. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, we ended up buying more than we need. I usually don't have a list because I'm I know exactly what I'm buying all the time. It's always mm -hmm. very the same, very boring, but very the same every time. Yeah. So uh, the list is already in the head. But if we don't have a list, and if you are hungry, it's not a very good time to go to the supermarket, is it? Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. And that's what I was saying, like, especially when you're hungry, but then if you don't have a plan, you're just like, I'm just going to take it all or like take way more than I think I need just to like almost cover my basis. And I say that, you know, in quotation marks. Um, but yeah, totally. Those two are a recipe for disaster. If you're shopping online, I would say it's a little easier because you can't physically like grab those objects. You're like putting it in your cart and seeing that like the total add up. Right. But yeah, you're right on the money there <laughs> as far as like shopping when you're hungry. Yeah. Do you have like an average in percentage of how much you would save from not planning and for planning? Oh my gosh. No, I don't. Um, I think we, we did the math one time and I won't be able to come up with this on the spot, but of how much you actually spend spend like if you're just like going out to eat I think that's probably easier to calculate because it depends on um if you're buying more like frozen foods right like so if you're getting those little meals um those can run you you know five bucks but if you actually made that yourself it'd be a lot less so you could you know do the averages there but if you just take I don't know um even like $10 a week, if you're overspending, you can just do the math and do the multiplication there and see, yeah, how much you can overspend for sure. And how your method works, like you, yeah. the planning part of it. Yeah, so of course, my clients can make their own adaption of this, but what I recommend is to plan for the month and then revise once a week. And the reason for the revision once a week is because normally that's when you're doing your grocery shopping if you get like fresh produce because a lot of produce doesn't stay good after a week. Yeah. Um, and then also life changes. So we don't want to make a system that's like so rigid, <laughs> like, it, like derails the rest of your life because then that comes right back to what you were saying about um, that you're just always focused on food. Well, now you're just always focused on the plan. We, we don't want to do that either. So just re revising every week to see, okay, what kind of social events do we have? Do we still want to plan that? Um, that, kind of, that kind of thing. Okay, that sounds good. And comes to another topic I want to talk about, which is those belief systems and thoughts that we have that we don't realize our thoughts, that we think that are true that you don't want to be restricted, that you want to uh, be able to be spontaneous with what you're eating. What if I plan something that it comes to the day I don't 
feel like eating that or I fancy something else Mm -hmm. and that you're not a planner or you're terrible at planning like this I know there's so many thoughts and that's just the ones that I remember that I get from people that work with me and even like just talking to people on like friends and family and they just state that as true as facts Mm -hmm. so you'll probably hear that quite a lot as well in terms of your clients and their own obstacles and barriers of why you're not doing it or giving excuses not to do it or like all of those things Mm -hmm. what is your experience with that like using the coaching part of it thing too yeah so I guess the reason that we ask those types of questions is normally because we have a belief about something right so if you believe that meal planning is not going to work for you then you're going your brain is going to find all this evidence that it might not work and so you could say the same thing like if you go on a vacation or a holiday where you're like I'm going to go travel to this certain place well, what if it rains? Well, what if we don't like the restaurants there? Well, what if like, but nobody does that because they're like, we're going to go on vacation and it's going to be great. We're going to like figure this out. It's going to be fine. So I would apply the same to meal planning too, that yes, of course things can happen, but if you believe that it's going to work for you, you're going to see that evidence Mm -hmm. everywhere. Yeah. And in terms of the thoughts and beliefs about, I just want to be spontaneous. Mm -hmm. I don't want to plan. Yeah. What would you say to that? Yeah. Be spontaneous, whatever that means for you. Um, Something that we do to be spontaneous is we have one of our meals, quote unquote, is an adventure meal. So we do this so that we can like still have those tried and true favorites, but we can like kind of go outside of the normal and try something new. And a lot of times the meals are not good. (laughs) We'll just like find something we found online and we'll try it and it's not good, but that's about being spontaneous. And sometimes we also like, if things happen during the week where we weren't expecting it, sometimes we can just swap meals because we still know we have all the ingredients and everything's fine, but we can still flip meals um, during the week if needed, but that doesn't normally happen too much. I think those situations where people want to be um, super spontaneous, I don't know if, if that has to be every day right but what I'm like thinking about is things are changing like the day before like someone invited me to go out tomorrow right yeah but I have already my meals planned and I want to follow the plan of course and I want to like be able to do what I'm saying I'm going to do because that's part of it that I of the what I teach is basically like we want to make a plan and follow the plan Mm -hmm. and then something like that comes up yeah and it was like yeah but I want to be spontaneous I want to be able to say yes and go and then what and not follow the plan and sometimes depending on your situation that might happen more often than in other situations like if you're more like if you have a family you probably doesn't happen Mm. as much if you are single and um, things like that yeah so I guess if that happened where a friend um, I guess tonight we'll just use that example we have something planned if a friend was like hey do you want to come over and or do you want to like go out to eat so then I guess I have a couple decisions I can stick with the plan that I made and say no I can stick with the plan and say yes but that I won't be eating with that friend I'll just be like having a drink or something like that um we can invite the friend over <laughs> to our place and like share the meal with the friend. There's um, there's different things you can do, but if sticking to your plan, especially, you know, if it's for um, weight loss or for like for your program, there's always a solution. I think that's one thought that has stuck with me with meal planning or really anything at all is there's always a solution and I can oh, always okay. figure this out. I love that. There is a lot of thoughts like, I don't know. Mm -hmm. this blocks every type of creativity and wisdom and focusing on the solution then because we focus on the problem I don't know where I'm gonna be I don't know where you're gonna eat I don't know where you're gonna go I don't know who I'm gonna be with and then it's like just blocks everything and people just like yeah you know what I better not even plan or I better not do anything just throw the whole plan out the window because it'll never be perfect (laughs) And yeah. that's another thing, like we don't, 
we expect it to be perfect, but we cannot expect it to be perfect mm -hmm. ever, right? Right. So when it comes to those imperfections, do you usually give any tips to your clients on, okay, you have your plan, but if something happens, what like are the options? Absolutely. Yeah, that's part of what I do is we create those backup plans and there's different tools that they can use to have those backup plans because of course that happens. Um, even if it's not like when life happens, but sometimes when we do our grocery shopping, there isn't an ingredient or the ingredient was like expired before we could get to it and we didn't realize it. Like there's all these things that happen, but that's never derailed us because of the beliefs that we have. And also that we just, we have a plan in place when things happen. Mm -hmm. And what would be your top three beliefs that helps you with meal planning? Ooh, I would say that the plan works. We believe that the plan works in any type of situation and we also believe that there's always a way to figure it out and we also believe that the long-term benefits of the plan are way more valuable than the short-term inconvenience of planning once a week mm -hmm. that's great when you say we you say you and your husband yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> okay great yeah <laughs> yep. Because of course there's like, we're not perfect human beings like anybody else. We, there's some days when we're like, oh, I do not want to plan. But then we both remember like what this short-term discomfort costs for like the rest of the week where we basically just sail <laughs> and we just like, it's like sitting down in a restaurant. We just like sit and then the food is there for us. We have to cook it. That's the only difference. <laughs> between our house and a restaurant right that would be amazing if we had a chef but um but yeah it just makes so it, it makes everything so much more smooth mm -hmm. do you also plan like takeouts or going out for meals and things like that we do yep and normally just because this is what we prefer is we plan to go out once a week we normally have family or friends or just a date night that we will go out. So we always just make that a part of the plan. And I think that's another thing, um, just kind of going back with spon spontaneity is if you know that it's a normal thing that you usually have a friend that just seems to pop up out of nowhere, make that part of your plan. If you already know that that's going to happen once, like just make it part of the plan. And if no one shows up, take yourself out. <laughs> Or like I do one of the backup plan meals, um, like I talked about earlier. Yeah, that's a great idea. Always have at least one of one meal a week or something that you um, can expect to kind of like either take away or um, mm -hmm. eating out with a friend or taking yourself out or on a date right. night. The idea of like restriction, what I was talking to our clients with um, with my clients lately is that we want something but then we have that thought that we shouldn't have or you couldn't have or you can't have mm. that is what creates the restriction feeling yep but what i like to say is if uh, you tell me if you agree or not but like as adults we get to decide whatever we want to do whatever we want to eat mm -hmm. and yeah on the emo like when it comes to overcoming emotional eating and losing weight, we do want to make better choices in terms of what kind of foods we're eating, uh, either portion size or how healthy and is there any processed food or not. So when in your program, do you focus on that or are you just focusing on the meal planning? Yeah, it's a little, it's a little bit of both. I mean, there's the the tactical aspect of it, like making your system, but it's the mindset, which deals with all of that. Um, because that, that's another thing that, that you can uh, run into is if you're believing that you're at the effect of your meal plan mm -hmm. or like the meal plan is happening to you <laughs> and you're like making that the villain, or like you said, like certain foods are the villain and they have this control over you or whatever. That's a much different space to be in and you're going to see that in how you show up for yourself and what kind of results you create from that thinking yeah it's like how can you make your plan work for you 
in that case, right? Yeah, and that like technically, like no one's telling you that you have to do this meal plan. Like you, from coming from a place like I have to do this versus I want to do this, like I'm choosing to do this. That's such a different mindset because, um, yeah, because you are, if you just remind yourself like, hey, this is a meal planning system that I created. I could like purposely not follow the plan the whole week, even though I have the groceries, even though I have the things. And normally when you, you like have that frame of mind, you're like, well, wait, 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 I don't want to do that. Like I'm choosing to follow this plan because, and I'm sure um, you can correct me if I'm wrong here, but I'm sure you see that in your, your clients too, with their yeah. choosing their foods ahead of time. Yeah, definitely. And this is another mind trick that is so powerful is exactly what you said. It's like, you don't have to, you mm -hmm. want to, or you choose to, and that changes the whole energy in your body. The whole, I like, it's super powerful. I had a client in one of, in my group program that on our first session, we coach on that. And changing that one word to I have to work out in the morning to I want to work out in the morning mm -hmm. completely change everything for her. Yes. So it's super powerful. That works for everything, not only the eating or the exercise, but everything in your life. As soon yeah. as you change that I have to to I want to, everything is so much more relaxed and it carry on and flows better, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. And it puts you in the driver's seat, not like it's happening to you. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So anything else you want to share today? Um, well, I would say that you should join Meal Planner Academy <laughs> if you have any issues with meal planning. Um, and then I also do free Q&A every Wednesday on all the social medias. So if you're on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, whichever. Um, and I have a ton of free tips right on my social media accounts too. So check that out if you need any meal planning help. Great. Yeah. I will put in the show notes, all your links and social media, everything. Um, so do you have like a last top tip that you want to share with the listeners today? I would say if you were going to get started with your meal planning system, I would just take a look at what your system is now. And just to get started, take one baby step of something that could shave the amount of energy or time that it takes to do that and just implement one tiny thing. I think that's a really good place to start with any new habit or any new changes. Don't try to go changing everything at once <laughs> all the time and it'll have to be perfect forever. Um, but just like figure out one thing that you can do and start being more mindful of that. Great, great tip. Baby steps. Yep. Cool. So what I ask all my guests is what is your self-care routine? Ooh, self-care. Well, I do a lot of different things. I think that's why I'm struggling because there's not really one specific thing I do. Um, I do play music. And so I love playing music um, either just by myself or with my husband. Um, sometimes I like using a meditation app just to kind of like calm down. And another form of self-care that I do that I think is not usually something most people talk about is I congratulate myself for everything that I've done. Mm -hmm. And I like celebrate the little things. I think that's a really underrated form of self-care because we just like are always looking to like how we're falling short, how we haven't reached the thing, like what's the next milestone we want to reach, but how often do we just stop doing and just like look down the hill that we just climbed and and celebrate all those things. So that would be, I think that's probably the most powerful one I can say. Yeah. I always tell my clients, like, let's celebrate that. Like, it's just a tiny bit, but people just go and look to all the things that are going wrong. Let's go on, on purpose and look all the things that are going right. Mm -hmm. Give yourself some credit. Yeah. Great. So where people can find you? 
Yeah, so on all the social medias, <laughs> as I say, um, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and then my website is katiereadcoaching.com, and that's W-R-E-D-E, -E. and like you said, you'll have the, the link below, but it's pronounced read, like read a book. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you so much for oh. being here today and sharing your amazing tools of for premium planning I think it's going to help a lot of people and I'm sure they will have all the information to find you yeah thank you so much for having me on this was fun great all right talk to you later guys bye <laughs>